Everest Medical Center. No, Mrs. Becker, we don't want the kidney back. We'd just like you to pay for it. <laughs> Mr. Miller, try to understand. Bankruptcy is not the end of the world. It's just the end of your credit rating. Mr. Simpson, I'm not trying to give you another heart attack. What would be the point? You still haven't paid for the first one. <laughs> Mr. Munson, you can get a second opinion on your diagnosis, not on your bill. You don't understand. The operation was a success. It was you that failed. I'm afraid you're not eligible for that payment plan. Because you're not going to live that long. Dr. And our first customer is? Uh, Dorothy Welkin, age 29. She's. Wait. How long have you been an RN? This is my first day. Mm hmm. Well, keep your ears and your eyes open. You might learn something. The first and most important question to ask any patient is Do you have insurance? Say it. Do you have insurance? Well done. Now, does she? Uh, Ms. Welkin does not have insurance. Fine. Send her to the ER. Oh, the ER is slammed. Uh, not our ER. Oh, right. Who's next? Uh, George Carson, and he does have insurance. Mm hmm How good is it? Mm -hmm. Looks like a Cadillac plan. Excellent. Is that too tight? Uh, no, but it itches a little. Oh, well, it's healing. How's Tuesday for the colonoscopy? What? The colonoscopy. I just came in to have the stitches removed. And we did that. But you're over 20, am I right? Yes. Then it's time we took a peek into the back door. Uh, I really don't think that's necessary, do you? Necessary? Of course it's necessary. And you know, while we're at it, we should run some tests. Put Mr. Carson down for a complete physical examination, a CBC, a BMP, and of course, a colonoscopy. Wait, okay, I don't... Hey, do you want to live to be 30? Yes. Then I'll see you next week. Come on. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> it's a pleasure seeing you. Have a nice day. Ka-ching! Did you really have to order all those tests? The first thing you have to understand about our business is that it is a business. We sell our product, we make a profit. You don't like it? Move to Canada. How are you today? Miss Sinclair, what brings you to see us? I checked myself in. I think I, I'm pretty sure I'm suffering from clinical depression and acute anxiety. Mm -hmm. And why do you say that? I saw it on a commercial. Oh, well, then it must be true. Oh, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. it, it was one that starts, do you sometimes feel that your life has no meaning? Right. Or do you occasionally experience nervousness at parties? Yeah, that's the one. I thought so. Tell you what, why don't you try some samples? This is for lunch. <laughs> this is for depression. It says it may cause suicidal urges? Yeah, I wouldn't act on those. Oh, OK. But I, I shouldn't be worried. Worried? No! The wackadoos in those studies would have killed themselves anyway. Uh, uh, oh. And this. No. And this. No. And this is for anxiety. It, it, it says it may cause nervousness, diarrhea, and paranoia. Hmm. Be sure to take that one before you go to a party. No, side effects are not important. If they become persistent, we just treat them as symptoms of a secondary condition and prescribe more medication. Oh, that's so clever. Uh, we like to think so. Thank you, doctor. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> ka -ching! Isn't this addictive? The gift that keeps on giving. Hello. Of course. Dr. Reynolds and I have been colleagues for years. Yeah. No, I'm sure if I ask him, he'll amputate that second leg for half the price. 
Oh, I know. It's a great deal. No, I'm happy to do it. I'll speak to him this afternoon. And oh, listen, when you're ready, I have a brother-in-law who sells wheelchairs. Yeah. He'll give you a fantastic price on a top-of-the-line ride. Yeah. Believe me, <laughs> you won't even miss your legs. <laughs> no problem. Take care now. Brother-in-law, got to throw him a bone once in a while. Is that the right time? Yeah. Seven minutes. Well, you better pick it up. Because time is money? Exacto mundo. We're going to make a medical professional out of you yet. Mr. Hill. I don't think you understand. If we don't run the tests, we won't be able to determine whether or not the malignancy has spread to adjacent areas. Well, but two weeks ago, you, you said my condition is incurable. Yes. Has it changed? No. Oh, well, then it doesn't matter that the malignancy spread. Well, technically speaking, it doesn't matter. But your insurance company will pay for everything. You're unbelievable, you know that? Excuse me? I'm, I'm facing death, and you're treating me like I'm a bad sport for not wanting to subject myself to God knows how many useless tests. Mr. Hill, you're taking this far too personally. Personally? Mm -hmm. Well, of course I'm taking it personally. I'm a person, for Christ's sake. Good point, good point. What if Dr. Cash is wrong? Dr. Cash is an excellent physician. There's no question about it. But he's only human. What if he made a mistake in assessing your condition as incurable? Nobody's perfect. Don't you owe yourself a glimmer of hope? I'll take the test. You're making a good decision. Kitching. Our business.